Day two of the trial of Dr. William Kiesel wrapped up with some eye-opening testimony. Kiesel is accused of ordering lethal doses of fentanyl, leading to the death of 14 patients. And today we heard from a former Mount Carmel pharmacist who called Kiesel's orders unusual. Chief investigative reporter Bennett Haberly is live at the Franklin County Courthouse. Bennett? Uh, good evening. That pharmacist told jurors how he questioned Dr. Husel about one unusual order and another that he said left him feeling shocked and alarmed. His testimony offered the first insight from an employee who worked inside the hospital with Dr. Husel. Is that the amount that Tyler Rudman would have had to pull out to give Janet Cavanaugh that order from Dr. Husel? Prosecutor David Zion showed jurors 10 vials of fentanyl, equivalent to 1,000 micrograms, which were given to patient Janet Kavanaugh, one of Dr. William Husel's patients, who was no longer part of the criminal case, after a move last month by prosecutors to dismiss 11 of the 25 murder counts. But prosecutors allege that similar doses hastened the lives of 14 Husel patients and amount to murder. His defense team says it was comfort care. On the stand, pharmacist Talon Schroyer recalled thinking Husel's orders were unusual and consulted a fellow pharmacist. I understood the circumstances to be that I was not, you know, crazy for thinking it was unusual, uh, but that it was not necessarily unusual for Dr. Husel and that I could call to question or maybe get it changed if I wanted to, uh, but it wasn't likely to be changed. Shore verified that order for Kavanaugh after talking to Husel, but that did not happen for other patients. In the majority of instances, prosecutors say the pharmacy was bypassed using an override function on this, a Pixis machine, an automated medication dispensing machine located in the ICU. By using overrides, nurses could access fentanyl that Husel ordered without pharmacy approval. Shorter described how overrides created a challenge for him and other pharmacists who were tasked with patient safety. Months later, Shorter notified his pharmacy manager in October of 2018 with a concern after patient Nick Timmons got 1,000 micrograms of fentanyl without his approval. What reaction, if any, did you have when you looked at the MARS, the medications that were given? I see. I was shocked. Why were you shocked? Because there was, well, those four... There were four medications given, or four sets of medications given, uh, the grand total of which I thought was large. Shorer said he feared two scenarios. That it was larger than it maybe needed to be or someone was stealing drugs. During cross-examination, attorney Diane Menashe showed medical records indicating Husel was the attending physician when Timmons coded and was revived two days before. So the man that sits here is the man that actually saved Mr. Timmons two days before giving him fentanyl. I agree. Internal emails from June of 2018 show Mount Carmel pharmacists raised questions among each other about large doses of ketamine and fentanyl being used. Schroer said he thought it was in reference to Husel. The hospital has publicly said it was unaware of concerns about Husel until October of 2018. And tomorrow morning, we can expect additional testimony from Talon Schroyer. He won't be the only person we hear from from inside Mount Carmel. Doctors, nurses, and other pharmacists are also expected to testify. Next week, we're expecting to hear also from a prosecution expert witness. Reporting live inside the courthouse tonight, Bennett Haverly, 10TV News.